One of the most common questions that I get asked is where did active self-protection come from? Why did we start the company? What is the driving force behind active self-protection and why we do what we do? And I've been asked it enough times that I said, you know what, let's just talk about it here. So where did ASP come from and how did we get where we are and where are we going? Let's talk about it. So if you wanna know about me and in my training background, and you know, sometimes people ask that question, there's a link in the description to about me on our website. So you can see my training background and all that stuff. But where did active self-protection come from? Like, why did it start? Well, I'll tell you where it started from. I grew up as a little guy um, doing a little bit of hunting with my grandpa, and I grew up some around firearms, but I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. Uh, self-defense was not a big deal to me. It wasn't a major issue in my life. And then I joined the military in 1995. I served eight years in the Navy and got out at the end of 2002. I didn't really use firearms there either. I made hot water the hard way in Uncle Sam's Canoe Club. I was a nuclear reactor operator in the US Navy for eight years. Got out as an E6. And, uh, and when I got out, I, I decided at that point, I uh, you know, had become a Christian while I was in the Navy. I didn't grow up in a Christian home, but had become a Christian in 1998 and uh, decided when I got out of the Navy at the end of 02 that I wanted to be a pastor. So what happened was is that I got out of the Navy, moved to Phoenix, Arizona to go to graduate school because that's what you needed to do. I needed a graduate degree, a Master's of Divinity to be a pastor. But unfortunately, I also had to feed my family. And so I worked uh, first at a video store, a, a video rental chain, a major one, and then a video game store attached to it. And I ran uh, one store, well actually three different stores, and I kind of bounced between three different stores, sometimes kind of overseeing all three of them, sometimes only one. Um, and while I was in that, uh, in that environment and working in a retail environment, the, uh, a generation, a new generation of console games came out. <clears throat> and during that generation of console games switching, things got violent in Phoenix, man. Managers were getting mugged for them. And they were getting even, even hurt for these video game consoles. And I was like, man, that, that is not okay. And, and we kept seeing reports about that. Well, about the same time, my, uh, my son was a little bitty guy at the time. He's an adult now, but he was a little bitty guy and, and we were homeschooling and his extracurricular activity was karate down at the local community center. And he was like, hey, Papa, will you come take karate with me? Dad, will you come take class with me? And I was like, dude, I am working full time and I'm going to school full time. I can't do it. What about when you get out of seminary, Papa? Yeah, buddy, I'll come take class with you when I get out of seminary. Well, literally at my seminary graduation, you know, I had my hood on and my little mortarboard and I was feeling all good with myself. And he came up and gave me a big hug. He was actually super sick that night. Gave me a big hug. Said, Papa, I'm so proud of you. Are you coming to class on Tuesday? And I said, okay, buddy, I'll come to class with you. I planned on doing that for just a few months, uh, just to get maybe a yellow belt. And then that way we had that in common. Well, now it's almost 13 years later and I'm still doing it. I fell in love with it. Again, at that same time, I said, you know, though, that martial arts isn't going to really do me very good if somebody's going to point a gun in my face, especially if they got any distance from me. So here in Arizona at the time, uh, we were shall issue uh, concealed carry. We're now constitutional carry, but at the time shall issue. So I went down, took a class and bought a handgun and a holster, put it on my hip. And for a little while there, it was just a magic talisman that warded away danger. It was just something I put on my hip every day, just like I put my phone in my pocket and my keys. Um, but it wasn't too long after that, as I got into my martial arts journey, that I realized, man, I'm learning to use my hands, I'm learning that, but I'm not learning this tool that I carry on my hip every day. And so if I'm gonna carry this gun, I really should learn how to use it and use it well. So I started doing that, taking a class here and there, getting to the range much more regularly, going to my more knowledgeable friends and learning how to shoot a little bit better. And that gets expensive. It gets expensive to shoot. <clears throat> well, at my core, I'm a teacher. I taught undergrads for nine years and graduate students for five years as an adjunct professor. And, and I thought, man, if I just teach some people, maybe at least I can write this equipment off. I can write off classes for me because I got to get better. I can write off ammunition. I can write off other purchases that I can use to get better if I go and teach some classes. So in 2011, Active Self-Protection was born. Uh, and really the purpose there is it was born just to have a few people in class teach some basic classes. So then that way I could write off ammo. That's just the honest truth of it. Uh, you know, a legitimate business, right? But you know how things go. Then, then that way at least my training is pre-tax dollars instead of post-tax dollars. 
Then the business kind of progressed a little bit from there. Uh, you know, like most instructors, I started by going down getting my NRA instructor certifications and I still uh, maintain those to this day. Um, I met my first training counselor, my first real training mentor, Mike Abramovich from Certified Instruction and Training and I love Mike and he's still a mentor to this day. And, and what happened there was, then was is I really started training because I started getting some people coming to me for advice and asking me questions that I couldn't answer. And so I said, man, I'm gonna go and find those answers and I'm always a guy that if I'm gonna go an inch deep, I'm gonna go a mile deep. So I started training and I really started kind of diving into things. And at the same time, uh, Facebook had started making pages for businesses, so I made a Facebook page first. Uh, and I'll never forget the first time somebody from outside of Phoenix commented. It wasn't like one of my friends or somebody that I taught in class. It was somebody from Ohio, I think. And I'm like, man, why does somebody from Ohio care what I think? But they do, so let me help them. And then um, after a while, it became a game. Like the Facebook page grew to like a thousand likes. And I was like, wow, man, a thousand people care what I say about self-defense. Okay, started curating content. And if you go to our Facebook page today, it's we, we post you know, over a dozen times every day with content from all over the web that I consider to be useful for self-defense. Uh, we still do that to this day. And uh, you know that really went and it was really cool. <clears throat> um, and then it became a game a little bit. Facebook started rewarding memes. And so I started making high quality ones. I started making pictures that had good self-defense messages with them. Not the goofy memes we see today, but actual kind of like advice. Uh, and that grew the page a little bit. And then Facebook decided they wanted to be in the video game and, and kind of compete in the video space. And so I was like, okay, somebody sent me a, a video of a knife attack in Thailand. And this is where things really started coming together. I think it was Thailand or Taiwan. And I put that on the page and I was like, man, pay attention to this, you know, in the, in the description and it went bonkers. Like people shared it and, and it was really a big deal. And I was like, wow, this is something new. Um, and I also took that video to my martial arts teacher and I was like, his name's Mr. Lawrence Robinson, Professor Lawrence Robinson. And I said, man, Professor, I, I don't know how I would defend myself against this. And he goes, okay, let's work on it. And, um, and so then I realized the videos could could help us be more evidence-based with our training to see this is what really happens in real life. Because see, what I had been taught a knife attack was, was really by Hollywood, honestly, was by television and movies. And, and this is what I see in Kung Fu flicks. Um, and this is what I was defending against. But what I saw on the screen in the surveillance video was not at all like that. It, it wasn't anything like I had been taught. And so I started posting a few of those. Uh, to the Facebook page, started kind of typing some descriptions in there. And if you go to our Facebook page, they're there, they're, you know, dig down to the bottom of the video tabs and you'll find them. And then one day, uh, you know, I, I was using um, my computer to make these memes and stuff like that. And, and somebody sent me a video that was really like, had this big long intro with nothing and then 30 seconds of action. And I'm like, man, I got to figure out how to cut that out. And I had a program to do that, but I didn't know how to use it. And so I went on the YouTubes and I searched how to use it, uh, found a basic tutorial. And in that basic tutorial was also how to record audio in that program from your laptop. And I was like, wow, man, maybe I could just like voice over this. And, and then in putting my voice on there, I, I can, you know, interact with people in a new way. And I did that and it was an absolute smashing hit. People really appreciated that. So I started doing those and from there it is just kind of snowball. That was the kind of the aha moment when, when I said, look, this actually helps people in understanding real life violence, in educating them on the principles behind defending against a deadly attack and then actually being able to defend themselves. And then of course we've just gotten better from there. Well, well YouTube actually didn't start. I actually had the YouTube channel back from 2013 where I just founded the channel and put the name on there with a picture so then that way nobody else did anything with it. If you go back to the oldest videos on our YouTube channel, I took a couple of things of me on the range and put them on there just so I had some content for somebody to find, but I didn't do anything with it. Until April of 2016. In April of 2016, YouTube said, hey John, you can monetize your channel if you want to. And so I was like, sure, why not? It's like walking down the street and finding a $5 bill. Why wouldn't I do that? And I have these like, four or 500 videos that I've done on Facebook, maybe I could take some of the older ones, throw them on YouTube and, and see what happens. Well, it really took off on YouTube. We found really that, that the best platform for my content was YouTube. And so we started really switching over and by I think July or August, we were really uploading to YouTube and then not uploading videos to Facebook. And, and it's really just grown from there. And now here's the thing, here's my current philosophy. You know, uh, every year in America, if you go look at the Bureau of Justice statistics, 
you know, the statistics for 2017 is the latest year that's out. There's 1.2 million violent crimes in the United States in 2017. And that's a lot. We're not talking about property crimes there. We're talking about violence against people. Uh, and, and if you go look at the BJS statistics, the last time they studied it, they, they say that the lifetime risk of victimization of violent crime could be as high as 80% and even more depending upon your demographics. And, and so I've just taken it on as my mission to say, listen, we gotta educate people about what the realities of criminal violence are. Not what Hollywood says, not what they've been taught on the television or not what their uncle taught them or whatever and not the sports that they've been in. And sports are great, and I got no problems with people who wanna wrestle um, and those kind of things. I love it, my son wrestled in high school for three years, but those are not criminal violence. But to understand what criminal violence really is, what really happens when someone attacks you, um, that is, is something that is a passion for me. Not because I like violence, actually I hate violence. I'm a very peaceful person. I, I was a pastor for 15 years. I wanna help people live fulfilled lives. But, but part of that is being safe and, and knowing that criminal violence can attack people at any given time, even if you live in a nice neighborhood. I said, no, nope, I'm going to devote my life to helping people understand criminal violence and to combat that so that they're prepared for it so that they can avoid it and know the things to get away from it. And then if they can't get away from it, the things that they'll have to do to protect themselves in the moment to supplement their training. See, I see active self-protection as education. It, it shows us what you'll need on that day. It doesn't make that happen in your life unless you get to training, unless you know your empty handed skills, unless you know your firearm skills or your tool skills, whatever tools those happen to be, you have to have those. But you'll know which skills you need if you're paying attention and that's why we, we put a new video up every single day on active self-protection. And that's why it's a passion of mine because I'm an educator. I love to help people learn and I want people to know the truth. You know, it's something that's important to me because of what Jesus said. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter eight, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm just seeking to help people know the truth about criminal violence and about the things that they will need in order to protect themselves from that and their loved ones. So that's where it comes from and that's what we do every day. Now I started Active Self Protection Extra in September of 2017 because I wanted to talk about everything in, I don't know, call it the concealed carry lifestyle. But my training journey, me as a defensive trainer, because at my core I teach people how to shoot handguns and I teach them empty handed skills. The YouTube stuff actually came later and, and the online presence came later. So all this stuff was for me to be able to help people to be ready to get into class. So the Extra Channel said, well, why don't I help people where they are to get into a defensive mindset, to learn how to use tools, to learn how to use their hands, to know the legalities, and all the other things that are involved in being in the defensive training industry, I just wanted to bring to people. So that's why we started Active Self Protection Extra, and that's why we post videos there every single week as well. So come along on the journey. I just wanna help you stay safe. I wanna help you protect your family. We get messages now literally every week from people all over the world because self-defense is not a uniquely American right. I believe it's a God-given right. It's the right of all people in all places to be safe from harm. No one has the right to, to hurt someone else or force them to do things against their will. And so to teach good people to be able to protect themselves is a passion of mine. And we get messages from literally all over the world. And we hear, John, you saved my life. Of course, I always say, I didn't save your life. You saved your life. What did you do and how did we help and what did you learn? And that's very gratifying and keeps us going. So that's the educational core mandate of active self-protection. Our mission statement's very clear. Active self-protection exists to help people in all walks of life to keep themselves and their loved ones safe from criminal violence. And that's what we do every single day and why we do it. If ever you have any questions, by all means, feel free to, to add it in a comment or send me a message. Get a hold of us via email. We'd love to help you any way we can. And where we're going in the future, God knows. We'll talk to you soon.